Hey guys, here are your quick fire questions for AQA Chemistry using resources. Remember, if you want a hard copy of these questions, you can pop over to my website and get that for free. What different ways can humans use the Earth's resources? There are a large, large number of ways we use the Earth. The plants that grow on the earth, for example, we eat them, we feed them to other things. The fish, the animals, the water, mining for um, resources, the rocks, the minerals, the metals, basically everything. Three resources we get from the earth. This is um, a very, very long, long list. Um, some obvious examples are going to be water, fossil fuels, rocks. To find finite resource, that is something that's going to run out. A renewable resource is one that's never going to run out. Portable water is water that is safe to drink and one of the ways you can produce that is by filtering it. If you haven't seen my video on this, you are either going to absolutely love it or absolutely hate it, depending on how strong your stomach is, but it was um, fun. Um, how do you sterilise water? You can heat that up to kill everything in there, and you can filter it to remove anything else in there. Desalinating water. To remove the salt from the water, you evaporate and condense the water. This will leave the salt in the bottom. Why do we need to develop new methods to extract materials from the earth? In previous times, a long time ago, there was lots of resources just sitting around all over the place. For example, copper. There were large copper mines. Now we have to develop ways to get copper from low yield um, places, low yield ores, because there's not as much of the resources easily accessible as they used to be. Bio leaching and phyto mining are both ways of extracting copper from low yield ores. Bio leaching uses bacteria. Phyto mining uses plants, brassicas, so broccoli. With the broccoli, um, the phyto mining, they grow the plants in a field that has been shown to have um, copper in it. They then take the plants, burn them, and then use electrolysis to get the copper out of the ash. How do we assess the impact of an object? We need to look at the resources that went into production, uh, the use of the object, um, whether it can be recycled or whether it can be disposed. Um, so the impact is going to be um, how much um, resources, energy, or waste were produced in each stage of an object's life. A life cycle assessment looks at the impact of each stage of an object's production, use and disposal. It is going to be looking at the energy requirements and the environmental impact.
How can we reduce the amount of resources used? We can reuse things. So plastic bags, you don't have to throw those away, you can reuse them or we can recycle things. Rusting is when iron mixes with water and oxygen to produce iron oxide. We can prevent corrosion by removing one of the things that causes rusting or corrosion, so oxygen or water, or we can cover it to again prevent oxygen or water getting in there. So we can galvanise it, covering it with a different metal, or we can cover it with oil to prevent oxygen or water getting in. An alloy has a distorted structure with no layers. The structure of an alloy relates to its properties because the distorted structure with no layers means there's no sliding of layers. leading to it being very hard. What is the composition of most of the glass we use? That is silicon dioxide. Which is sand. What are clay ceramics? These are made from a starting material of clay and sand. These are then baked in a hot oven and turn out to be very hard, very durable materials. What is the how does the structure of pro polymers link to their properties? So whether the chains have any crosslinks is going to drastically impact the properties. It's going to change it from a thermosetting to a thermosoftening polymer. The crosslinks stop the chains sliding over each other, which makes the polymer much harder, much more durable. It means it's going to um, burn instead of melt when it is heated. The harbour process is used for production of ammonia. The nitrogen and hydrogen come from the air, and the conditions needed Iron catalyst, about 450 degrees C and about 200 atmospheres.